Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, interesting stuff in the heavyweight division, new developments coming out. You know, Tyson Fury has, from the pol from what I can see on in the YouTube boxing community and boxing forums and Facebook boxing groups, just anywhere where you can talk boxing on the internet and or amongst boxing fans, it seems like Tyson Fury has lost quite a lot of fans since the Deontay Wilder fight because of the fact of he's fighting Tom Schwartz next. Uh, the ESPN deal, a lot of people think he does the Wilder rematch. And, um, you know, perception on him isn't at its highest right now. You know, that's why he can ill afford on June the 15th to turn in a piss poor performance against Tom Schwartz or he will be, you know, really crucified for it, just to, you know, to put it, to put it uh, lightly, you know. Uh, Tyson Fury recently, he came out and he, and he himself on his own personal Instagram account said that he wanted to fight Dillian White and that they he wanted to fight he wanted for some strange reason he wanted to fight Dillian White for the WBC Diamond Belt. Okay, so then Dillian White says, okay, no problem. I want I want to fight. I want to fight you for the, the, the uh, I'll, I'll fight you for that mandatory spot. No problem. I love that fight. You know, and then. Um, Tyson Fury yesterday he was actually confronted about this manner by. My main man, Sean Tattel. Big shout out to Sean Tattel, my probably my one of my best friends in boxing. Um, he he works for Fight Hype, great reporter. Go check him out on Fight Hype if you, if you haven't already. Uh, World class reporter. But uh, he interviewed Tyson Fury yesterday on Fight Hype, and I'll leave it down below for you so you can go check it out. Um, and Sean asked him about fighting Dillian White for that spot, and basically he came back and he completely contradicted himself, like just. Completely contradicted, contradicted himself. Said that he's not interest, interested in fighting Dillian White. That Dillian White is a bum and all this stuff. And it's it's caused quite a stir, quite an outrage with fans all across the world of this amazing sport of boxing. And um, he then went on to say, if I'm not mistaken, that he's not going to fight. He's not ever going to fight Anthony Joshua because Anthony Joshua has his balls in Eddie Hearn's purse. And Eddie Hearn, and he needs to get his balls out of Eddie, out of Eddie Hearn's purse before they can ever fight. So. You know, I'll say this, man. I I'll give you guys my take on it. Now, it's no secret. If you watch my videos, I love Tyson Fury. I think he's the best heavyweight in the world. I think he beats all these guys. I, I, I really believe that uh, he's gonna. When it's all said and done and the smoke clears, he will prove to be the best heavyweight of this era. Um, but right now, as it's, uh, you know, uh, on May 30th, 2:33 p.m., he's not in a good. He's not looked at in a positive light by, by many boxing fans. He contradicted himself in a major way here, but I, I see this as mind games for Tyson Fury. You gotta understand, if you, if you know, if you've really taken the time to study Tyson Fury's career, if you've watched enough interviews, if you've really dissected him and you know what you're looking at as far as when he's in front, when he's in front of a camera, when he's talking, you would know that Tyson Fury is, from a psychological standpoint, one of the smartest fighters, a genius of boxing. You would know that. You would know that. I mean, go look at how he mentally screwed Vladimir Klitschko and their whole build up, you know? Um, that right there is all you need to f for proof of, of, of mentally where he's at as far as, you know, being able to play mind games and get, and get, get into people's skin. And look, he knew what he was doing. He knew that with, uh, with Dillian White, people were going to jump on that. Then he knew Dillian White would say yes. And then, boom, he can posture himself as, 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 the, as the king of the world and the lineal heavyweight champion, you know? So, um... It's gonna piss people off, but you know one thing is it's getting under people's skin. So if he does decide to ever fight Dillian White, which he may or may not, we don't know. But I mean, if he does fight, decide to fight Dillian White, he's already in your head, living rent free, and people don't understand this about Tyson Fury. So I see it as mind games. I see it as him just, you know, getting under the skin of Dillian White, trying to uh, get on, Eddie, just piss off Eddie Hearn if he can. And and yeah, I, I got nothing but uh, uh, I can see what he's trying to do. But I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'm a I'm a massive Fury fan. I love Fury. If he doesn't fight someone credible, his next fight, I, I won't even be able to. I won't even be able to defend him. I'll be I'll, I'll be sure with you. I won't even be able to defend him. You know, I'm, I'm probably one of the only people here on YouTube, not necessarily defending him, but like I'm not really mad at the Tom Schwartz fight because I mean the guy just fought Wilder. It was a very tough fight. I mean, did you did you watch the twelfth round? The guy got put on his ass and got knocked unconscious and then got up like the Undertaker. So, if he wants to take an interim fight, no problem. Let, let, let him do so. You know, it, it's, a, it's, it's a known fact that Deontay Wilder has no intention of fighting anybody in the division anytime soon. You know, you know he has, he's freaking in a, in a witness protection program for boxing. Um, so, there's that. You know, Anthony Joshua making his American debut against um, 
Andy Ruiz, um, and you know, the, you know, Fury Fury is not gonna take a Joshua fight for anything less than 50-50, and you know, to have 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 that, you know, make of that what you will. You know, Tyson Fury, in a lot of people's eyes, let, let, let's have it right. Tyson, Tyson Fury, in a lot of people's eyes, have has already ducked three fights this year. You know, because um, some people people blame him for the wild rematch not happening, so they, they count that as a duck. There's this with Dillian White, you know, reneging and pretty much contradicting himself, saying he's not interested and he's a bum and all that stuff. So that's two. And then, if I'm not mistaken, he recently said that uh, he he will not take 40% of a 60-40 personal Anthony Joshua. So that's three. So right now, Tyson Fury is looked at as a as a massive diva by the entire world of boxing. Um, I'm not quite there yet. Like I'm not saying he's a diva yet because again. The dude just fought Deontay Wilder, um, his first significant fight in three or four years, uh, three, like almost three years. If the man wants an interim fight and he gets signed to do an ESPN and he wants to look good and try to build his name up in America, then so be it. You know, Anthony Joshua's, I mean, he, obviously Andy Reid is a lot better than Tom Schwartz, but I'm saying Anthony Joshua isn't fighting uh, uh, Wilder and he's not fighting Dillian White. I know it's not because of him, it's because of those guys ducked him, but I'm just saying, like, let the man live. Okay, if, if now, in, in the last quarter of this year, if we hear nothing about him fighting Wilder or White or AJ or one of the big fights or anybody notable, then I will be the first one to shit on him here. But, you know, it's his, it's his Las Vegas debut. It's his ESPN debut. Let the man get a soft touch. You know, let the man get a soft touch. Let the man live, okay? Um, because he's been the B-side his whole career. Let's have it, look, let's have it right. We can be objective. And, I'll be objective and say, look, what Tyson Fury is doing right now, I'm not the biggest fan of. But let's be objective here. No, no heavyweight at the top. No heavyweight. I'm talking about Joshua and I'm talking about Wilder. None of them have taken the risks in their career that Tyson Fury has taken. He went on the road. He fought Larry Klitschko in Dusseldorf, Germany. I didn't see Wilder going to England to fight um, Anthony Joshua. And I haven't seen Anthony Joshua come to US, the USA to fight Deontay Wilder or any other top fighter. So with that being said, you know... They haven't taken those kind of risks, and I, you know, and, and Wilder did that, did it the first time, and was a massive underdog in Klitschko, upset him. But and, and that's people forget he outclassed and schooled Klitschko so badly that people forget how much of an underdog he was. That he was just supposed to be another routine title defense for Klitschko, just completely schooled him. Um, then falls into depression, met, and you know all that stuff. Mental health goes to shit pretty much. Then he fights Deontay Wilder, the hard, the, the hardest puncher in all of boxing. He had two bump fights where he really learned nothing. It was just to, to, to knock the cobwebs off um, and get a couple training camps in. And he came to America. He came not just to America, but he came to the other side of America, to L.A., um, whole different time zone and whatnot. Uh, you know, longer longer flight, you know. And and he fought Deontay while outboxed him uh, with no significant with no significant uh, tune-up fights, really, with no real uh, tune-up, like, 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 like significant fights before that. Um, in his last two fights leading up to the Wilder fight. So he took these risks, and we know that the only reason that Wilder got in the ring with him and signed the dotted line in the first place was because he thought that Fury was done, he thought that he was fat, and he thought that he had no chance to, to, to be, be that guy he was in 2015. But what he was proving very wrong, he lost, and now that he lost, he has put himself in a position of power where he signed with the worldwide leader in sports. Bob Aaron believes they can build him up here in the States. You know, I have my doubts about that, but... They think they can build him up here in the States, and he's and he's going through the process. So we're going to watch the process. We're going to see what he does. Um, but, yeah, right now Tyson Fury look, contradicting the shit out of himself. And I, 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 I think it's just mind games. I can't really say that he's ducking anybody because I, I don't think he's ducking any of these guys. I think I think it's just all mind games. And he, he, he he's betting on himself the same way Wilder's betting on himself, and a lot of you Wilder fans praise him for it. Fury's done that himself, and he's doing it. For, for like the first time in his career, he's really doing it, you know, in, in a business, from a business standpoint, he's really doing it. He's with ESPN, he's, he's fighting in America and Las Vegas, so you got to look at it like that. And the same thing with Joshua. When Joshua was coming up um, as a prospect, um, you know, and and when he became world champion, well, to even become world champion, you got to understand, Anthony Joshua had to constantly overpay people to get in the ring. He had to overpay uh, Charles Martin, I think mean, Eddie Hearn paid him $5 million. Then he had to overpay uh, Joseph Parker. I think about five percent, five to ten percent more than what the mandatory per split was, or something like that. Because I think they wanted to give Parker like 
was it 35 or 30? I forgot what it was, but then, uh, what's his name? His trainer, Dave Higgins, eventually went on a rampage and uh, got Joseph Parker more money. So they've had to overpay people their whole careers. Joshua had to take those risks early in his career. And if Joshua would have failed in any of those fights along the way, um, he wouldn't be where he's at right now. He wouldn't be undefeated, you know, getting ready to make one of the biggest debuts this country has seen in quite some time at Madison Square Garden for a heavyweight boxer, you know? So everybody, the top, the big three at heavyweight, they're all betting on themselves or have bet on themselves in different ways. But of the three, no one, none of them have actually taken the level of risks in their career Tyson Fury has, and that's a 1,000% fact. Um, Klitschko, Germany, Wilder, USA, it's that damn simple. So um, hopefully, you know, I'd like to see a Dillian White Tyson Fury fight if it ever does come to fruition. Personally, I think if they do fight, I see it as a, um, I see it going the same way the two Derek Jezora fights went. I think White's gonna be plotting forward. Uh, he'll be looking to catch and counter Tyson Fury with a straight left hook, well, with the left hook to knock him out or hurt him. And I see Fury using his height, his range, and being too slick, too fast, and just quite frankly, too good for dealing in white. And I see him winning a, uh, a, uh, a tough, but uh, you know, clear, unanimous decision. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. The interview from Fight Hype from my boy Chantel will be in the description. Uh, you can leave your comments down below. You can hit that like button, and like I say in every single one of my videos. You can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.